Hello, and welcome back to the office. I'm Dr. Wigo, and today we're going to try using the Vision Pro as the monitor for my Mac Mini. Back over here. I had to wait for Vision OS 2.2 to release, which it did this week finally, because that's the one that lets you do the wide and ultra wide versions, which I think I might need. Eh, we're going to see. Plus, I got my Anna Pro A2 head strap. It's not a strap, which you can see about in this video up here, which makes it so much more comfortable that I might actually be able to sit in here for long periods of time working on things on the mat. It could work out great. Let's go in here and look around and see what it, what it feels like and what it looks like so you can get an idea of what it's going to be like. But then we'll come back out here and we'll talk about some of the reasons I might not be able to use this as my primary display on the Mac Mini. Although I think there's some workarounds that I'm going to try. So first you'll notice it's kind of weird because my icons for my Vision Pro are like through the screen here for the Mac. But yeah, we'll get around that. So the first thing we got to do is turn on the Mac Virtual Display on the M4 Mac Mini. And let me apologize if this makes you ill because it's hard for me not to turn my head. So here's my desktop, which is now in the Vision Pro. And you can see that the, desk, the monitor in front of me, which I can't see now because I have the environment on. But this isn't what's interesting. This is what Vision OS 2.2 added, which is the wide that's a little more exciting. But then they go to ultra wide. And now I have to turn my head to actually see. Can I push it farther away? I cannot push it far enough away that I don't have to turn my head. Oh, you will notice that the keyboard, my little keyboard here and my mouse are showing up through Ah, but that's a bit of a problem here. Let me let me turn the environment back off. But here's the thing, and I, I've I've mentioned this in other videos. I can't touch type. I have to be able to see the keyboard. As you saw in the environment, the keyboard was very dimmed out, and the keys aren't backlit, so I may have to do. It. But here's how the ultra wide might work. Let's launch DaVinci Resolve. So there's DaVinci Resolve. Well, I don't need that much timeline. So here's what I could do, see, is I can pull it in on this side, and I can pull it in on this side. So now I have like a normal size display, but now I have two extra displays. So if I want to run another app, so I can have my Photos app over here if I need to grab pictures, or videos or anything to drag over here. I don't know what you're hearing. Vision OS 2.2 also now routes the audio instead of using the little crappy speaker in the in the Mac Mini, it's routing it through the Vision Pro's headset. So I'm getting stereo audio when I'm scrubbing here. We're on the cut page. So let's hit the sync bin. Now in this particular video, I only did two cameras, but when I flip back and forth, I can immediately start scrubbing. As we talked about in the Mac Mini video, which I will link down below, the M4 Pro Mac Mini is much peppier than the original, the, the base model. And it's especially good here. And we know from that video that it takes long, it takes longer to export than my PC, but not by a lot. But it's a lot peppier and easier to edit in here. Using this setup could be very, very useful. So this seems like a valid setup. Now let's get out of here. Now here's the problem. There's two things. The first is, the reason I'm interested in using the Vision Pro as my primary monitor for the Mac Mini is because this monitor, if the PC is on, connected to the monitor via DisplayPort, it'll automatically flip to that. And when you go into the little monitor settings and say, well, go to HDMI 2, which is the Mac Mini, it can take 
10 to 15 seconds to do that switch, which is slightly annoying. You know what's more annoying? If the Mac Mini isn't awake and outputting a video signal, when you do that, it goes to HDMI 2 and then it takes like 30 seconds and then it flips back to the PC because it couldn't find a signal on HDMI 2. To use Mac Virtual Display, the Mac has to be unlocked, open, ready to, ready to rock and roll. So what I've done is I've gone in and turned off go to sleep. So basically the Mac Mini just has to stay running all the time. And I have to tell it not to lock because once it locks, you can't unlock it with the Vision Pro. You have to be on the screen. And yeah. Because I live alone, having the Mac Mini unlocked is not really that big a threat. But I'd have to leave, I have to leave it running all the time. Now, yeah. where that becomes an issue is this little guy here. This Thunderbolt 5 drive can get very hot. Now, if it's not in use, it doesn't get that hot but it still warms up just being on all the time. I tell you what, I'm gonna edit this video in here. I'm not gonna capture all of it because it's, it takes me hours to, to, to do an edit, but I will do the edit. I may capture some things to show you and this video will be a four camera video because I have this camera and I have this camera and I have this camera over here and then the Vision Pro feed. So I'm going to stop recording now and then take all this footage and take it into the Mini and use the Vision Pro as my primary monitor and do the editing. And I'll capture some of it, not a lot, because then I'm going to have to edit again after I do that. So it's like recursive. I'll tell you how it went and maybe show you a little few things and then I'll come back again and shoot another one of these after that and tell you how it went. And then we'll wrap up the video. The next day. So we're back in the Vision Pro. I have been editing the part of the video that you've already watched. You can see it right here on the screen. I decided the ultra wide is just too wide. I don't like turning my head so much. And actually it's kind of getting annoying here, even on wide. So while this is wonderful, I think I can live, I think I can live with this, which is basically the same size as the monitor right in front of me, my 48 inch OLED. Oh, one thing I noticed, I'm not having trouble reading the menus or the print. That's why I have those optical inserts in my Vision Pro with the reading glass inserts. It's so I can read text on the screen and it, it's working. It's like looking at the OLED monitor with my reading glasses on, except I don't have reading glasses on because I'm in the Vision Pro. And apologies for the audio. I've switched to the Vision Pro is recording the audio. So there may be some differences there, but I wanted you to be able to see and hear everything that was going on in here. But, but see, if I flip over to the, to the cut page, you can see that now I have three here. And even when I had four back over here where I was using the Vision Pro, well, here, I'll just run back and show you. But you can see when I flip over to the cut page, bam, watch over here on the right, boom. The PC takes way longer than that to load those four images and to let them start sync scrolling. Display. So it's, it's working great. So yeah, this is really a deal. In the part you've already watched, I talked about leaving the Mac mini on constantly so that I could just pop this on and start up. But it turns out the OLED monitor will automatically flip to the HDMI 2 if that's the only signal active. So basically I have to shut down and then start up the, the Mac mini every time I want to use it for video editing. And I got to tell you, the editing experience on the monitor, which I will show you when we're back out of here, is also very good. I may save the Vision Pro for special occasions or if there's something I really need to do that it would require. But for the most part, I can just do it on the OLED monitor. 
Again, I'm still hours away from editing because now I have to edit this back in, and then there's going to be another piece I'll shoot after this this part is all done. And so, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do before y'all see this video. In not that many hours. So, I'll see you back outside in, in a little while. Later. Okay, so I have edited the video up to this point and it went great. The Vision Pro is a fantastic monitor. The normal one is perfect, but the wide is even better and the ultra wide, if you need that, is phenomenal. Again, I didn't like the ultra wide because I didn't like having to do this to see the screen because I mean it is, this it's, a, it's here and here. So it's like immersive. It was a little too much for me. So as you saw in the, in the video, I scaled it back down to just the normal size and that worked great. And then I also tried it using this monitor here and that also worked great. I'm ready to start editing on the Mac mini. There's little things, you know, operating system differences. I miss my right click. It, I didn't realize how often I right click in DaVinci Resolve, but apparently I did virtually everything by right click and now I have to remember to hit the key and because I only got the one button. Apple. And it's going to take me a long time to get used to ejecting drives before you unplug them. Windows did that years and years ago and so I, I was used to it, but then they fixed it where you could just pop them out and it was fine. They would always close the writes. That's why you have to eject them in case there's cached writes that haven't been written to the disk, but Windows just stopped caching to external drives so that they just shoved it on out. Speaking of caching, copying files off of these cards, SD cards, is faster than it is on the PC. Now, the drive it's going to is not faster than the internal SSD on the PC, and it's the same reader that I'm attaching to both, so there's something about the Mac OS that's just better and faster and more efficient at copying stuff because the copies went better. I was very pleased with the performance of DaVinci Resolve 19 on the Mac Mini. I showed you inside the, how fast the cut page would load those clips and start syncing them to move and on the PC it would take way longer. I'm impressed. And the only drawback is it's a little bit slower than the PC at exporting, but like I said in that video, was that that video or the video? In one of the videos. So the exporting speed is slower because of the lack of GPU cores, because this one only has, what, 20? But exporting isn't the problem. Again, you can go in the other room and come back. Now, if I was a professional in editing like hundreds of videos, yes, I'd want exporting to be as fast as possible, but because I do one video a week, Actually, I'm about to do a whole bunch of videos for my last semester of school. I can live with the slower export. It's not that much slower. Color me impressed. The Mac Mini is a great machine for editing with DaVinci Resolve. It's fast enough. It's peppy enough. Now, I don't do a lot of the weird stuff. By weird stuff, I mean color correcting and denoising and all the things that are huge drags on speed. I watched some video where a guy turned on all that kind of stuff on the Mac Mini and it just like, it was a two minute video and it took 30 minutes to export. For complicated stuff, probably not good enough for you. But for me, for my little videos, I just have to be able to do like four multicam and it does that just great. What about next week? Oh, next week will be my annual Christmas story. Don't know which story I'm gonna tell yet. And then I have a bunch of videos lined up after that that you're probably not going to want to see, but come by and check them out anyway. I've got one about a very expensive toilet. I'll have one about a new lens. There'll be another books video that everyone seems to hate, except the people who love them really love them. So that's all coming in the coming weeks. It's January. Nothing's good on YouTube in January. I'll do my best to make it somewhat entertaining. So that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Bye-bye. I got to go start working on those other videos and I'll be editing them on the Mac Mini. Thanks for staying to the end. Bye-bye.